So we're going to be diving into where projects are saved, how to get a project file. If you want to go a step further, prep for a project archive, as well as perform a project archive. And then finally, we're going to talk about how to get a project archive back into DaVinci Resolve. So without further ado, let's get started. If you're here for a specific subject, down in the description, I have time code links to each portion of this video. So the first one that we're gonna be going over is project files. When you save a project by just going to file save project or save as, it's going to be saving into a database. Now this database is going to contain all of the projects you've been working on in DaVinci Resolve. Whenever you have to update DaVinci Resolve, uh, they kind of ask you to back up your database. Your database is going to have all of these projects saved in there together. Um, if you were to take a particular project that you've been working on and you want to give it to someone else in your team, you can send them a project file instead of sending the whole database. To get just the project file itself out, what we're going to be doing is coming down to the little house, which is the same thing that uh, when you start up DaVinci Resolve, that same window, it's going to be your project uh, window and yours is might look like this uh, because I have so many projects. I always just look at it this way and you're just going to go to the project that you want to get an actual project file. Now I have to preface this with a project file is just going to be the information about your edit. It's going to have your cuts, wherever your keyframes are, any type of adjustments you have. If you're using any like open effects, it's going to have the information to drive that open effect, but it's not going to contain any video files, any images, any audio, or any of the open effects stuff. So just wanna let you know that. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is just right clicking here and then come here to export project. Uh, then you're going to you know just pick a location and you'll have a project file whoever is going to be taking that file and they want to bring it into their database, all they have to do is go to project or import project. Uh, if you just want to go from one database to another database, you can just do it simply export, open up your other database and then import. Uh, one thing that I could say with this is if you are working on, let's say windows, and then you go to Linux, or if you go to Mac, all of the uh, file structure is going to be a little bit different. So one thing that you're gonna have to keep in mind that you're going to have to relink all of the audio if you do not have the same file structure going from one machine to another machine or one you know system to another system, whatever, however you're doing it. If you're all just keeping it on your one uh, system and switching between databases, it's pretty easy um, just to open up in the other database because all of your file links are the links to all of like where your files are located will be identical. Uh, it's not that difficult to relink stuff. I believe I have a video on that. If I don't, then uh, tweet at me and I'll make it one, but I think I do. So that's pretty much it. It's that simple to get a file out of DaVinci Resolve. Now, like I was saying about the linking and stuff like that, that's kind of where using a project archive might be of interest because what a project archive is, is it's going to have all of your media. So it's going to have all of your video files, all of your images, all of your audio, and it's going to encapsulate all of that within a DaVinci Resolve archive folder structure. And then you can take that folder structure and take it to any system and import it. And then it'll rebuild the project on their machine and it'll have links already set up to those files. So you don't have to worry about that too much. Uh, which is pretty nice. The only thing that you have to watch with that is if you're working on a large project. So let's say this was a fairly large project. So I have different locations. I have different cameras in here. I have different cards for the cameras. This project could be 30 terabytes. It could be, you know, 70 terabytes big. If we're making a project archive and all we really want 
is the uh, stuff that we used in the project. And let's say we put a whole audio library in there. So maybe we, um, like for instance here, I have a whole bunch of audio tracks here. I didn't know which one would work. I just brought them all in and uh, some of them I might not need um, to archive. What we can do is in that project archive that's going to have all of those different files, we can limit what gets uh, sent to the project archive. Um, so to do this, uh, if your project is complete and you don't need to do anything else and we can start to remove from the project, now we're going to thin out the project a little bit so that it kind of works here. Um, in this instance, the way in which I work is I have each card, it has its own timeline. Um, the way in which we're going to be thinning this out is we're going to be using one of the filter tools within DaVinci Resolve, which is the use. So if a file has been used, and the way in which that I have this set up, any, so each card will have a, um, a timeline. So it's all gonna be showing as being used media. So that's kind of something you have to think about. Do you just want to have just the stuff on the master timeline? You know, the, the one that you actually did. Maybe you don't split it up into multiple timelines or maybe you do have multiple timelines and things are linked and that go to the master timeline. So it's something to think of. Uh, but let's say this, we want to keep anything that we've worked on, but all of the extra stuff, if we brought in extra images, if we had this extra audio or whatever it may be, we just want to thin out that stuff. So that's kind of the mindset that we're going to be going into it here. So projects done. We're going to go over to the media tab, media tabs. That's obviously where we can see it all. And the first thing that we're going to do so that we can actually see this column here, which is the use column is you're just gonna come up here, you're gonna right click on any of these here, and we're gonna be able to see a whole list of all the different columns that we can potentially have in here. And then we're gonna scroll down till we see uh, usage. And one of the things that you might notice is that it doesn't pop up here, so you might have to come over, and wherever it is, you can just grab it and then just move it so that you can actually see it. Uh, I like to keep it over here where I can see the file uh, names as well as the usage. You don't really need to have this column here, but I just wanted to show you how you can see these because we're actually going to be doing just a filter. And so we're gonna come over here to the magnifying glass. We're gonna drop this down and we're gonna go to all bins. So this is going to be all of the media, right? Next, we're gonna come over to filter by and we're gonna scroll down till we see usage. And where are we? There we are. And then in here, we're just going to put in a zero. And then this is going to show um, things that have been used zero times. It's as easy as that. Uh, one thing that I like to do is on the clip names, we're going to click this. And the reason why I like to click this is because uh, what it's going to do is it's going to um, filter by the type of clip. So as we can see up here, we have our timelines. We're not reusing these timelines on a timeline, so they're not being used, but we want to keep them. So all of this stuff down here is uh, stuff that hasn't been used. So we can just go in and clear all of that out, out of the project. But we're gonna keep the timelines because we want the timelines. So everything else is used. This project doesn't really have a lot, uh, just because I wanted to show you the actual archiving project and well, I don't wanna sit here and wait for, you know, terabyte or two to transfer over. So now that we have that filter in there, we still have everything. So if we come back over, we still have all of our timelines and everything else. It just got rid of all of the stuff we didn't use. So in the me or the audio, there was no audio that we added. So it got rid of that stuff. Okay. So now we kind of thinned it out and that could be large depending on how you have your project set up. Um, next, we're going to come down here. So then we're going to just right click here and we're going to go to export project archive and we're going to pick our place i'm just throwing it in this demo folder we're going to say what the project archive name is and then it's going to be an archive and then we just hit save next it's going to ask if we want any of the render cache or optimized media now this is depending on what you're doing with this if i'm giving this to another uh, editor that might be nice depending on how much optimized media you have these things can become big quick but you kind of have to you know is it is it uh 
Is it quicker for him to make the optimized media or is it quicker for me to just copy this to a drive and then send the drive to him and then have him do it? If you're making this to be like a cold storage backup, an actual archive, then this stuff isn't really necessary. It's just gonna be extra uh, data that you could recreate easily. Um, so I personally, when I'm making an archive that is, I'm completely done, I'm not passing this to someone else, but I'm completely done, I don't uh, copy these over. But it really depends on your use case, okay? And now it will copy over. Like I said, this project doesn't really have much in it, so it's going to go uh, pretty quick. So then when it's done, the little uh, box goes away. So I'll close this for now, and then let's actually take a look at it. So here it is, um, and this is going to be the only thing that you need to save. Now this is a folder, it's not like a file that uh, you can't sift through, it's an actual folder. So depending on what you use, um, you could, uh, so like let's say Windows, I can actually still, if I have this on my archive server and I use the search tool within uh, the Explorer, I can still see those files in there if I ever need to because you'll see your media files and then you'll be able to see all of the different footage pieces that you actually have. Um, so that's kind of nice. And then you have the project here itself. So now that we have this, let's go into a different database and uh, import it in there because it's nice when you see how to back things up or to archive them, understanding how to properly use those backups and archives is uh, half the battle. So let's do that quick. Okay, so now we have, now we're in a different database. So all we're gonna do is just right click. Here we have the import project or restore project archive. Now, if you're sending someone a project archive, make sure that you let them know that it's a project archive um, because if they're not familiar, they're just going to think it's just a project and they're going to just uh, import the project. You can do this, uh, but it's not going to have access to all of the files because it's not going to know to look for them. So if they were to do this, it would work by just going to the location. Then they could go in here and they're like, oh, there's the project. Let's click on it. Open because it's a dot drp dot drp they actually can do that but it's not going to link all of the media so that's something to keep in mind so let's come back and then let's uh go to restore project archive doing that then we can pick that folder hit open what it's going to do now is it's going to go say okay well this is a project file we'll take that and then it knows the file structure so then it can go in and if we click on this we're gonna have all of our files. Everything is going to be connected up to that location. So if I come back to here and we look at the files location, we will see that right here, we can see that it went to the demo, then the project archive, you know, the media files and everything else that that has in it. So that's the key here. So if you're sending someone project archive, make sure they know how to do a project archive. Same for yourself. If you're just, you know, storing this as a backup, uh, understand that it's a project archive, that it's a different import process, because if you don't, you're going to be like, oh, what the heck? It didn't, you know, automatically link up the files correctly. So um, that's kind of cool. Um, I wish that it was done a little bit differently, but it is what it is. It works. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of how you do the project archive and then also going into a different database and importing that and then just making sure that you use it as a project archive because I know the only reason why I know that is because uh, the files that I provide, if you hit the join button, those are to some of my projects. And some of the people there, they just import just the uh, the project file instead of the project archive. And they're like, hey, it didn't come with the files. So that's kind of, uh, that's why I know that some people aren't too familiar with the project archive uh, aspect of it. But that's how you do it. Um, if you have any questions about DaVinci Resolve or you would like to be a part of a cool community that is ever growing, 
uh, with people that are enthusiastic about DaVinci Resolve where you might learn something or you could ask questions about DaVinci Resolve if you're having issues or whatever it may be. There's a link in the description to that Facebook group. Um, if you're interested in DaVinci Resolve products to speed up your workflow, I have a bunch on my website. The link's down there as well. And with that being said, my name's JR and I hope you enjoyed this. Have a good one.